Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Before we get started, we would like to mention for all of our guests joining that your phone lines are currently in a listen-only mode to minimize our background noise. We do have a planned question and answer session at the end of the presentation today, at which point you will have the opportunity to ask live questions over the phone lines. And to do so, you can dial pound two on your phone keypad, which will place you into our live question queue. You may also submit note questions to us at any point throughout today's conference. And to do so, you can use the note chat function either on the right-hand side of your screen or located under the participants menu at the top of your screen. And then please submit all of these note questions to all presenters or all moderators. If you do experience any technical issues throughout today's conference, we do ask that you please submit these via the note chat as well, directly to myself at ATT, CES operator. And with that, I'd like to see today's conference and hand the call over to Liz Clark for our opening remarks and introduction. Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us today for our Vet Services Training and Exercise for an Animal Disease Diagnostic Touch and Drill webinar. I'm Liz Clark, and I'm a training specialist on the Professional Development Services Branch staff. I'm also a member of the working group developing the FAD drills. Eric Heck will begin the presentation today, and we'll also hear from Andy Curtis from Cattle Empire and Dr. Greg Suskovic from the Minnesota Board of Animal Health on their perspectives on the importance of these drills. Eric Hess manages projects, projects and designs and develops materials for various projects and clients. His principal areas of expertise include emergency response planning for agroterrorism, natural disaster incidents, exercise design and development, quality assurance and improvement, environmental investigations, and compliance auditing. Eric has more than 28 years of consulting experience, including more than 25 years of emergency management and response experience. The last nine years of his career has focused directly on emergency management planning, exercise and response related to food and agriculture. Eric is the Vice President of SES, Inc., and currently he is working with USDA APHIS under a cooperative agreement with various roles under the Veterinary Services Training and Exercise Plan. Andy Curtis is the Regulatory Compliance Director for Cattle Empire, which is one of the largest family-owned cattle feeding organizations in the United States. It has a total one-time capacity of 245,500 head of cattle in five feed yards, all located in Haskell County in southwest Kansas. Cattle Empire hosted the pilot fad drill for beef feedlots. Andy was directly involved in the scheduling and conducting of the beef feedlot pilot. Dr. Greg Suskovic is a, senior field, is a field senior veterinarian for emergency planning with the Minnesota Board of Animal Health. Greg is also a FAD and the FAD field coordinator for the state of Minnesota. Dr. Suskovic is an active member of the working group that is developing the FAD drills, and he was the FAD implementing one of the dairy operation pilot drills. At this point, I will hand the webinar over to Eric. Thank you, Liz. Well, we'll go ahead and get started and kind of uh, look at where this project came from. Um, the idea to develop foreign animal disease diagnostician drills uh, came about in fiscal 2016. It's part of the Veterinary Services National Training and Exercise Program. Um, at that time, they decided that uh, for foreign animal disease diagnosticians, uh, some uh, got calls all the time, others didn't get a chance to practice their field skills, so maybe the Training and Exercise Program could develop drills to allow them to practice those, practice those skills, and I'll talk, uh, give a little more detail about that in a bit. The project itself uh, right now for the current fiscal year is one of 58 events under the Veterinary Services Training and Exercise Plan and under the program. Uh, those 58 events are split between training events and exercises. Again, this being a drill, it counts as one of the exercise events. On the FAD drill work group, uh, that meets monthly. Uh, there are, are 25 industry representatives uh, from dairy, uh, livestock markets, beef, swine, uh, and other aligned industries that contribute. There are eight federal members. Several of them are foreign animal disease diagnosticians and state there are six participants. And again, several of those are foreign animal disease diagnosticians. If you're not familiar with the foreign animal disease diagnostician, uh, they go through very specialized training. Um, right now, uh, they would go to Plum Island, New York, uh, it's off of Orient Point, for two weeks of very intense training where they would actually see uh, the diseases that we want to keep out of the United States 
watch the clinical progression of symptoms so that if they were ever to see this in the field, they would be able to identify it. They also learn uh, the skills, the investigative skills that go along with uh, their duties. Foreign animal disease diagnosticians include both state and federal personnel. They, through the Plum Island experience, and there's continuing education for them, they get hands-on work with the foreign animal diseases that we're most concerned with, the high-consequence diseases, and some of the softer skills of conducting the investigation and working with producers. One of the things that goes through this drill and through that process is the confidentiality of information, um, especially doing investigations before you know what's going on, uh, information is closely protected. The way a foreign animal di disease diagnostician is deployed is generally dependent on the producer or the veterinarian or other animal health professional noticing something unusual going on with an operation. Uh, that person calls the state or possibly a federal uh, veterinarian. They report it, a decision is made, uh, the state veterinarian working with the assistant director for veterinary services in the state decide whether or not to send out a foreign animal disease diagnostician. And then generally within 24 hours if a decision is made to deploy one, uh, they're on farm doing an investigation. Oftentimes they're referred to as the first responders for foreign animal disease because their diagnosis, their sa the samples they collect are really the pivot points on whether or not we go forward with a response or a foreign animal disease is identified. However, I'd like to put a caveat on that, that the true first responders are the producers and their animal health professionals they work with. Uh, because uh, the surveillance system for foreign animal disease, um, there are some uh, sampling events or systems that are still in place in the United States the bulk of the first detection or monitoring or surveillance for foreign animal disease really falls on that producer uh, noticing something unusual and making that call up. In fact, most states, if not all states, have a reportable disease list that veterinarians that are licensed, if they suspect those diseases, are required to basically make that call to the state and possibly get a foreign animal disease investigation going. The primary mission of a foreign animal disease diagnostician, they're out there to see the forest fire. They are, their role, their job is to identify or detect possible foreign animal diseases as quickly as possible, collect information that is important in driving any containment that may be needed. Uh, containment may come as samples are being analyzed or it may be implemented after the data comes back from the laboratory. The goals of the drill are very simple. We wanted to give foreign animal disease diagnosticians a chance to practice the skills they learn. Um, some often get calls. Uh, it's not unusual for foreign animal disease diagnosticians to get several calls a year in the state. Luckily, um, they're just uh, uh, preventative, uh, make sure that, that, that nothing's out there that we need to take care of. But a lot of uh, foreign animal disease diagnosticians don't get an opportunity to do that. In addition, uh, with the investigation skills, we wanted to provide an opportunity to allow them to practice the sampling and animal handling skills that they learn in, in school or in their practice. And in some cases, they may want to work outside of the livestock types that they're normally working with to get some additional experience. Paperwork, data entry, uh, that's always part of this. Data management and the foreign animal disease response or even in the investigation is critical to allowing an effective uh, response to any disease. So that's an important component here. EMRS stands for the Emergency Management Response System. It's a data management tool that veterinary services uses to manage potential disease outbreaks or actual disease outbreaks. So again, if it's a system you're not used to working with, uh, the more practice you get, the better you are with it. We wanted to provide the industry that would be uh, working with the foreign animal disease diagnosticians, an opportunity to learn about the whole investigative process and what to expect, to take the mystery out of it. Um, that's a very important goal. And, and along with that goal, the industry representatives on the work group said that they really wanted to drive that interaction between a foreign animal disease diagnostician and the producer themselves. Because in a real foreign animal disease investigation, there's a potential 
if there's a positive detected, that that would be a life-changing event for a producer. And the ability for that foreign animal disease diagnostician to communicate effectively uh, with the producer is paramount. And again, um, this drill allows that opportunity, and it was one of the most important pieces for the industry uh, as we went ahead with the development of these drills. The components of the drills are twofold. Uh, we have a virtual option or an on-site option. Just as the name suggests, if you do the virtual option, uh, you do it all from your desk and from your computer. If you do it on-site, you're actually going to work with a producer and you're going to be on a farm somewhere uh, near your normal area of operation, that is for the foreign animal disease diagnostician. At this time, the only virtual drill option we have is for dairy. We will expand that if there appears to be a greater demand for it. For the on-site version of the drill, where you actually would go work with a producer, handle animals, conduct your investigation and interviews, uh, sample, etc., we have right now available dairy, beef feedlot, and swine drills. Under development, we will be fielding a cow-calf drill and a slaughter plant drill, and that's going to be targeted at state inspected or custom plants. We may or may not go forward with a small ruminants drill. Uh, the work group really isn't certain there would be much demand for that. Um, but again, that's still in process. Right now, livestock markets are a critical part of our whole livestock industry, especially on the beef side. We're not going to, we did, decided not to dive right in to the livestock market piece uh, because the Livestock Market Associ Marketing Association and a lot of the foreign animal disease diagnosticians acknowledge that there are some unique aspects of conducting a fat investigation at one of these operations. So what we did is we formed a smaller working group that right now is focusing on a fat investigation at a livestock market. We're trying to identify those unique aspects of an investigation that need to be brought forward. And then when we get those best practices identified, we'll work with the industry to see whether or not there's a viable mechanism to do a drill or if a drill is needed. The other component, probably the most important part of the on-site drill is a host producer. Um, mock data is what we supplement the on-site drill with, and it entirely drives the virtual drill. Because hopefully when a foreign animal disease diagnostician goes to an operation, the animals are going to be healthy, they don't get as much out of their interaction with the producer uh, with the healthy animals. So what we do with the mock data is we try to drive a particular differential diagnosis that will cause the foreign animal disease diagnostician to do certain notifications within the federal chain of command or state, and also to work closely with the producer um, arranging for what's going to happen after the investigation. The drill process uh, is pretty straightforward, and I'm going to go through it uh, in order here. The first thing that a foreign animal disease diagnostician needs to do is to apply to conduct a drill. And of course, like any good program, we have forms to fill out. Um, right now, the application for the foreign animal disease diagnostician drill is a single page. Um, you probably can't read this, but I'll give you references on where you can find these uh, forms later on. Basically, what we're trying to capture is the person requesting it, the fact that their supervisor has approved it, and what they would like to do, uh, whether they want to do a dairy, a feedlot, uh, cow-calf operation, swine, et cetera. Um, that's all going to drive how we move forward with the drill. So once that application is sent in, to the drill coordinator, and currently that is uh, SES under that cooperative agreement, we will work with the industry representing the production type that's identified. If someone wants to do a swine drill, we'll work with North National Pork Board, and they will find us a host producer in the state, hopefully near where the foreign animal disease diagnostician is, uh, uh, lives or works. Uh, for the beef feedlot side and for the cow-calf Probably we're still hashing that side out a little bit. We're working closely with uh, NCBA. And, of course, for the dairy, it's National Milk Producers Federation. 
And uh, if we move forward with the livestock markets, LMA has been a tremendous supporter of this program. So the industry will identify a host producer. Once we have a host producer identified, the drill coordinator, SES, will contact the foreign animal disease diagnostician, and we have several purposes of this contact. One, we need to let them know who the host producer is and that they have been contacted and they're expecting a call. We want to review the drill process with the foreign animal disease diagnostician and answer any questions. Uh, just prior to that, once we've identified the host producer, uh, we would have called the host producer. We go over the dural process again and answer their questions. All of the industries, we put together uh, one to two page descriptors that are species specific on what is entailed in a drill, and those go out as the industry reps are trying to find us a host producer. But again, it's always good to verify an understanding before we move forward with the drill. Once those two coordination calls are made, the foreign animal disease diagnostician is basically released to contact the producer just like they would with an initial call if uh, they were being deployed, and they will go through uh, scheduling and getting information from the host, et cetera. Uh, but basically, that's when the drill starts. We have a window of 60 days or less once we identify a host, uh, host producer for a FADD to schedule the investigation and complete it. Um, that's just a program piece put together by the work group. Once the drill is conducted or once you're on site, a foreign animal disease diagnostician can look anywhere from a two to four hour um, investigation piece. Again, it's going to be somewhat dependent on the species that's done and the complexity of the operation. The start time, that's the date and the time of the investigation, is going to be determined by the host in that initial coordination call. We want the host, and it's very critical, or a representative from the operation to accompany the foreign animal disease diagnostician throughout the drill. They would do that during a, a real investigation, hopefully, and it's very important here because there's information and communication that needs to go forward during that walkthrough, during that investigation, uh, that is part of the reason we're doing this drill. So we want to make sure that that can occur. We want live samples to be collected. Um, that's, again, one of those coordination pieces with the producer. So far, we've had 100% concurrence on that. Um, the samples would be collected. They're not going to be analyzed. And as a, a foreign disease diagnostician goes through the investigation, we will present them with mock data, and I'm just going to go through a couple examples of what it might look like. Um, this is for swine, but the mock data generally will start with an introduction, give some text on what is being observed either in a pen, a free stall area, or a particular animal, uh, give some of the information. If you did a clinical examination, what would the temperature have been if the animal was actually sick? Um, and other things. But that would be in a diagnostic card, we call them, and it would be a text-based one. Then the diagnostic cards may have some pictures uh, to show you what you're actually seeing during the investigation. Again, these are for swine. Um, the animals you're looking at hopefully be healthy. So again, we're trying to drive a particular differential diagnosis. And then some of the diagnostic cards are a combination of not only uh, text, but also pictures. Just uh, sometimes with pictures, it's hard to see what, what you're looking at. And the last piece, and this is somewhat depending on the Internet availability uh, uh, via your smartphone while you're out there for a foreign animal disease diagnostician, we use QR codes. And that's something that a participating foreign animal disease diagnostician is asked to load on their smartphone. And basically, and you can do this right now if you want, if you scan this QR code, you will see a video that would be supplemental during the swine foreign animal disease drill. So again, we, we use a, a myriad of uh, mock data, or ways to introduce mock data for the FADS. Because a lot of these investigations, especially for the more experienced FADDs, uh, might get to be routine, or FADDs may want to do these more than uh, once. They might want to come back every year, every other year. We also have foreign animal disease diagnosticians uh, complete what we call challenges. And we'll give them two challenge cards, uh, depending if it be species specific, 
And this is an example of a challenge card. Generally, there are pictures that go along with it, then in text. And again, we present a, a situation where the FADD needs to identify what they would do. And what a FADD would do in this case uh, for a challenge card is they would write down in a paragraph or two for challenge card seven what they would do based on the description. And that information would be included in the evaluation. Other things in the process, feedback is very important. Um, of course, the producer will have an opportunity to provide feedback to the foreign animal disease diagnostician. We do that through a survey, monkey survey, uh, where we can collect um, just relative rankings of performance, but also descriptions of what worked well or what a producer may have uh, wanted in addition. As far as the FAD from their supervisors and other associated professionals, the evaluation there, uh, we're going to have an evaluation for the EMRS data entry. We're going to have an evaluation of their sampling uh, based on whether the proper containers and volumes were collected, whether the labeling was correct, whether the 10-4 10 10 forms or other documentation was filled out correctly, and in the case of samples that are shipped, that the shipping papers were completed and the samples were packed properly. Uh, to date, uh, the non the the local National Animal Health Laboratory Network laboratory, generally the state diagnostic labs, have been very supportive, and they will do the evaluation for FADS. Um, for the data entry piece, uh, we use EMR, EMRS associates that are uh, distributed throughout the country uh, for that evaluation. And then once the producer gives feedback, once the FADD provides their feedback on the drill, the EMRS associate and the non-laboratories do their evaluation. We notify the supervisor, and the supervisor then looks at the whole package and provides an overall evaluation to the foreign animal disease diagnostician. To implement this drill specifically to a host producer, a host producer needs to understand that they should accompany the foreign animal disease diagnostician throughout the drill, either the producer themselves or someone that knows the operation. While the foreign animal disease diagnostician um, is going to have mock data that's going to drive the, the differential, other information, epidemiological information that they would normally collect, we request the producer just provide that information as if it were day-to-day -day operations. So animal movement information, their employment employees, whether they have animals at home, other contact premises nearby, et cetera, we request the host producer provide that information as if it were real life, as the actual operation. Um, again, we're not expecting the host producer to talk about the disease portion because the area animals are healthy and we're going to provide that information. They need to allow access to the entire operation so that the FAD can basically conduct the investigation as they normally would. And it says if acceptable, we, we haven't had any producers uh, say no, and the industry, as they go out finding hosts, this is a major uh, talking point. Um, we really need to have samples to allow the FAS to collect samples. We're not going to collect tissue um, or vesicular fluid. Hopefully there isn't anything like that there. Um, but the, the FADs will be requested to bleed and take swabs to select animals. And we're looking at a minimum of two animals will undergo a full clinical uh, exam and to be sampled. And then, of course, the host producer needs to complete the survey monkey to give the FADD uh, feedback. The foreign animal disease diagnostician has a few additional things to do. Um, they're going to be interviewing the producer and anyone at the operation. Again, you need to conduct the investigation as if it were real. Um, and that sometimes it's hard, but again, that's part of doing this drill. They're going to have access to the entire production operation, so it should be unfettered. And based on your um, idea of what the investigation should look like, you need to go wherever you need to go. Uh, the clinical examinations, I talked about that. Uh, you may, a FAD may ask a producer to help uh, put cattle into a chute or into a squeeze chute uh, for investigation, or they may move the animals or hogs. Again, that will be worked out with the producer um, during the uh, investigation, during the, uh, the on-farm drill. And then they will be sampling. The coordination of the drill timing is critical. 
the FAD during that initial call with the host producer is going to be doing that as well as collecting probably some initial information about the operation besides its location. Um, they'll be looking at other premises nearby and, and other information they would normally collect during an investigation. We're asking that the host right now, because this is not an emergency, it is a drill, uh, that FADs uh, confirm with the host producer what are their biosecurity requirements and they need to make sure they can meet them. Um, so that's an important part of that initial discussion. Uh, confidentiality is critical. The data that's entered that will be evaluated will be put on the training side of EMRS um, and all that information once the drill is completed and the evaluation is done will be erased. They need to conduct the investigation in a realistic fashion. Uh, basically talking to the producers if the mock data and other things that you were seeing or able to ascertain were real and move forward uh, as if it were a real investigation. And then at the end, again, based on your differential diagnosis, if you're the FAD, work with the producer on the what-if aspects of the drill. If you think it's a high suspicion case of X, you know, what is likely to happen in the future, um, how long is it going to take to find out? What does the producer need to do until then, et cetera? All that will be part of that interaction between a foreign animal disease diagnostician and the host producer. And that's a really huge piece of the education part of the drill. Artificialities that are associated with this drill, we're doing an exercise. You can't get away from that. Um, you need a real event to, to eliminate that. The mock data may not exactly match the operation you're at. We may have pictures of Holsteins but the dairy you're at may be a Jersey dairy. Uh, we may have uh, finish hogs near market weight, and you may be going there just as the ISO wings have arrived or the wings have just arrived and they're much smaller. So again, we're asking for some latitude there. We're trying to, to build mock data in a system that fits um, as many systems as possible. And a lot of times, uh, especially on the young hog side, you might get directed there uh, either for biosecurity reasons or the integrator um, may have a reason for directing either to, to new um, weaned or finished hogs. Remember that the producer does not have disease-related information to convey. They're going to convey everything else. We're relying on the mock data to give you all that. So you're going to do your clinical investigation, your examination, and the animals aren't going to have elevated temperatures. They're not going to have this, that, or the other you're going to have to look at the mock data to overlay onto your clinical examination if you're the foreign animal disease diagnostician. Sampling, again, uh, you may, in a real investigation, based on what you see, would take tissue or fluid, et cetera. We're going to limit it to blood and swabs, and that's just an artificiality of the drill. The initial information you get on that call is very limited. Um, we're going to give you, in the situation manual, what happened at the producer's operation that initiated the call, it'll be very vague. Uh, sometimes that's the real case. So that'll be a little hard thing. You'll have to work through with the producer, and again, you can work with the drill coordinator on that. And the thing that we've had, one of the challenges with FADDs is because all of our evaluators are virtual, they're not going to be there with you as you do the, in, uh, the drill. We need you to hang additional information on EMRS that you normally would not do during an investigation. Uh, examples might be if you set up a little cleaning and disinfection station by your car, we need you to either describe it or take a picture of it and hang it as an inspection task on the EMRS case. And foreign animal disease diagnosticians uh, will know what I'm talking about, and we have a guide that will explain that very clearly um, as you go through the drill. The documents, uh, we have a situation manual for the virtual as well as the on-farm drill. It's very important for the FADDs that sign up for one of those drills to read the situation manual, especially the portion that describes the drill itself, because there's information in there that you need before you call the producer. We have an EMRS drill guide that was put together uh, by Dr. Archer that lays out with pictures step-by-step step how to hang that additional information and where to hang it on EMRS. We have evaluation forms. Of course, that's paperwork, a drill. We've got to track things. 
There's an evaluation form for the EMRS piece, the data entry. There's an evaluation form for the sampling folks. The NOM labs will fill that out. There's the overall evaluation form that the supervisor would fill out. There's a producer feedback survey, and there's also a FAD participant feedback survey that allows us to make the drill better with every iteration. If you want to find these supporting documents, you can contact Liz Clark, and I'll have her contact information at the end, or me, Eric Hess, um, the, drill or the drill coordinator, and we can get them to you. If you want uh, to access them without contacting us or just on your own, they are on FADI right now. It's a forward-looking SharePoint site that BS operates. And to access FADI, you need to have e-authentication level 2, which means you need to fill out a 513 and go through a, an approval process that we can help you with. And I believe that's open to states. Um, it's open to federal people. And it might even be open to producers if you want to look at these documents. Okay, that's the nuts and bolts of the program um, very quickly. What I would like to do now is kind of switch gears and let you hear from the folks that have been directly involved in the drills, either from the training aspect, how it might uh, impact foreign animal disease diagnosticians, from foreign animal disease diagnosticians themselves, and from producers that have been directly involved in the drill process. So I'm going to turn the, the webinar over, and uh, we'll hear from some folks that are, have been involved in the drills. Okay, this is Liz Clark, um, and I just want to add that, you know, the drills were added to the Vet Services Training and Exercise Plan you know, to continue to develop the continuing education, education opportunities for both federal and state FADDs. Um, you know, we do um, do a scenario that we practice at Plum Island as part of the course, but it is only a tabletop because of the restrictions on the island. And though I think the, that exercise provides a great training opportunity, these bad drills provide a more realistic experience. Um, they're a great opportunity for both federal and state FADs to practice their skills for field investigations. Um, and I think whether the drill is done virtually or at an actual feedlot, et cetera, they're still being able to practice those skills they don't get a chance to do, even on a monthly basis. Um, most fads leave the course at Plum Island, and it could be years before they get called to do a field investigation. So these drills definitely provide a great opportunity for even the most experienced fad to exercise the skills, which adds to our agency's emergency preparedness. Um, Greg, how can you? How are you involved with the drills, and what do you think? Well, good morning. Um, this is Greg Suskovic with the Minnesota Board of Animal Health. And uh, before I was uh, the emergency planning director for the Minnesota Board of Animal Health, uh, my first 26 years I was a field veterinarian, uh, and so I had, went out and did investigations and. And I've also done a few uh, foreign animal disease investigations, too. And I think that my training at Plum Island in 2005 was probably some of the most valuable training and most interesting training I think that I have ever had. And I got out, and I tell you, that first year or two, uh, my FAD kit was all bright and shiny and ready to go. And and I was ready to go at a moment's notice. I was the tip of the spear, ready to go. Then after five, six, seven, eight, and finally nine years when I had my first uh, call to do an FAD investigation, it seems that when you got that call, everything just left your mind. And you're thinking, oh, my Lord, who do I call? What do I do? What samples do I take? And for Lord's sake, Where's my FAD kit? I don't even know where that is because my TV, TV media expired. So one of the things I've always been concerned about is that time span between actually getting your training and actually doing something. I think that's where these drills really come out very well. I've assisted uh, in the work group figuring out how to do some of these drills, how to plan them. I've been involved with a few other people in Minnesota. We went out to a dairy and did a pre-pilot drill 
to see what works, what doesn't work. Uh, I think that was very valuable for getting the final, uh, final product out. I think these drills will give the FAD uh, investigator valuable experience in contacting producers, going out and talking to them, getting histories, setting up your biosecurity area, your clean and dirty line, uh, examining animals, being actually in the animal production area, looking at sample collection, and uh, doing that all horror, horrible thing of actually filling out and putting something in Hemerts, getting valuable experience in doing that. I've gone through the, uh, the uh, uh, diagnostic cards, and I think they add a really great perspective on doing the drill itself. Those QR codes on those drills really add a lot of virtual and video, uh, a video uh, link to what you could possibly see on one of these situations. I would like to just say that if you're an FAD out there and you haven't done too many things with uh, investigations, I really encourage you to take one of these drills and try them out. And if you haven't done an FAD, for years or, or never, absolutely. Take one of these, find what you're comfortable with, and give it a try and see what you have. Um, if you have done some foreign animal disease investigations, uh, if you're in a state like Minnesota where we've had uh, numerous opportunities to do swine vesicular investigations, maybe you might want to try something in a dairy or a feedlot or coming up uh, perhaps a livestock uh, uh, market. Any of those opportunities are available, and I think they give you valuable experience. Now, you will be evaluated during this, but I don't want you to really be concerned about that. You're not going to flunk out or anything like that. Look at the evaluation as, as a learning tool. So what you can do better, what could be done better, and take it for that. So what I want to leave everybody with is that this can be fun. Go out and have fun. Uh, and with that, I thank you all, and I'll take any questions that you might have um, later on. Thanks. And Andy, um, what's your perspective on the drill? Yes, good morning. Um, I, I, we appreciate the opportunity uh, to uh, be a part of today's webinar and um, also for being able to participate in the FAB drill. Um, from what I understand, our staff veterinarian, uh, Dr. David Seclocha, was contacted to see if we would be willing to participate. And from what I understand, we pretty much jumped at the opportunity. And primarily, we did that so that we could have a better understanding of the processes and procedures that would be used in an actual event. And then secondarily, we were able to use this as a training opportunity for our own personnel, which was a great uh, experience. And I just want to share that uh, this exercise was valuable to us for a few reasons here. Um, and the first was that the gravity of the issue was really driven home by going through the steps of receiving the fad on site, evaluating the animals, and then going through the mock reporting process. And like I said, we chose to use this exercise as a training tool for our own facility personnel. And there were very few people within our organization that uh, knew that the exercise was going to take place. So once we received the information from the diagnostician, we pulled in all of our facility managers that morning to walk through the process. And this had much more impact doing it that way than us just telling them about it. And we were able to have a time of question and answer with the diagnostician and our employees where we could ask questions and get answers as to how things would proceed if it were real. The realization of the seriousness and the impact of an actual event really hit hard in that moment. And this was probably the best part of the drill for all of us. This exercise also helped our management team to understand what would what would be and what would not be required of this during an actual event. For instance, uh, 
what would we need to provide as far as equipment or workers um, should a depopulation event occur, and what would our options be? And it was very informative to us as well to find out how how well prepared the local emergency management folks in our area really are. There are pieces of equipment that we were not aware of that would be available in our local area in such an event, and it was nice to know about that. And we do feel that while the startup of an actual foreign animal disease outbreak would be clumsy, uh, we definitely feel much better prepared. And many of our questions regarding how things would be handled were answered very well by the diagnostician. And we have a better understanding of the information we would need to access and how quickly we can get to that information to respond to the diagnostician. We were also made very aware that while we can plan to the nth degree, there will still be challenges to deal with, such as weather and visitors and equipment and technology. And you just can't plan for some of the situations those things might throw at you. And finally, uh, our team has continued to put thought toward this type of, of an event and what we would or could do to prevent a foreign animal disease outbreak and how we could better respond to it if it occurs. Uh, we realize that beef cattle facilities present a greater uh, biosecurity challenge, uh, but we believe that there are things that we can do to tighten up and be much better prepared. And we're going to continue to work towards the development of a much more involved biosecurity plan for our facilities. And um, to end here, uh, we just really appreciate the opportunity to be involved in the, in the exercise and the opportunity to play through and to try to get our heads wrapped around such an event was a really great experience. Thanks, Andy. And we certainly appreciate um, Cattle Empire being able to be involved in these drills. Um, I think it was good on, it sounds like it was good on both parts. So, um, Eric, do you want to add anything else? Before yeah, there are questions. Yeah, I just wanted to add a couple of things that, that I, I glanced over. Um, first of all, a question may come up, what is the cost or time commitment on this? Do, does a district or state for a foreign animal disease diagnostician or their fees, et cetera? And basically, uh, for the foreign animal disease diagnostician, it's just a matter of time and driving out to a producer's operation. Uh, everything else is managed and uh, run under the National Training and Exercise Program. Uh, the coordination um, and uh, working with the evaluators, et cetera. And then, Liz, this is probably something that you can speak specifically to. Um, it's my understanding that participation in a FAD drill will meet your annual CEU requirements for maintaining your FADD um, status. Is that correct? That is correct. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's, yep, so that's all I've said. Or it's online. Yep. Okay. Um, let's, so let's open it up. Do we have any questions? I know I just got I just got a written question, um, and it said, "Can multiple fads participate in on a drill at the same time, or is it only for one individual fad?" Um, I can answer that question. I think that if there were multiple fads to participate in the same area, I think that's fine. I don't think there would be any problem. I mean, how do you feel about that, Eric? Um, what we've seen happen um, in a couple instances. Uh, what there would be a primary foreign animal disease diagnostician that was doing the drill, but they may have an animal health tech or another FADD come along as an assistant. That's becoming more and more of a standard process. Um, but we really look to have one primary person do it. I know that there are a lot of FADDs in the queue for training, um, and that possibility of having an experienced FADD go out and do the drill and have uh, one of the newer FADD shadow right now uh, that's certainly something that, that would be a possibility. Okay. And Tony, our moderator, do you want to give it, um, directions on how to actually ask a question verbally or with our notes? Of course, and a reminder for all of our guests joining us, if you would like to ask a live question over the phone lines at this time, you can do so by dialing pound 2 on your phone keypad 
and that will place you into our live question queue. You will then hear a notification when your line is unmuted. Please state your name and question. Again, that is pound two on your phone keypad to place yourself into our live question queue. And we would like to mention that if you would like to submit note questions to us, you can still do so by using the note chat function either on the right-hand side of your screen or located under the participants menu at the top of your screen. Then please address all these note questions to all presenters or all moderators. It looks like we do have a couple callers that have joined into our live question queue. I can move us to our first caller now. Yes, this is uh, Bradley Key out of Kentucky. I'm a deputy state veterinarian. In addition to being um, a state, a SAHO, and a FAD um, for the state, I'm also in the Army Reserve Vet Corps, and so I'm a military FAD. And military FADs represent a large but typically not utilized pool mm -hmm. of foreign animal disease diagnosticians. Um, and oftentimes they're not in food animal practice. Is the drill this drill um, available to military FADs, and if so, is the request process the same, or do we work with the local, federal, or SAHO officials? Liz, do you want to? That's a good question. Yeah, that's a good yeah. question. I don't think that we have, um, we've really talked about, I mean, I do, I do agree with you. I think the, the military vets that have come through the FAD course are, is a great population out there that maybe are not utilized as much as we could. Um, I think that's something that we might have to discuss. Um, you know, we also are in the process of doing some um, FAD uh, scenarios that are going to be based online that the military folks will have um, the opportunity to use. But I think that typically what we've suggested for any of the military folks coming through the FAD course is to have them go through their state um, animal health official to let them know that they're in the state, whether they be on uh, active duty or whether they're a reservist, most likely the reservist, to let them know that they are in the state. And possibly what we could do is have them go through their state animal health official to try and um, get on with one of these drills. And we can discuss that at a, you know, at a later date. Uh, Dr. Keo, this is Eric. Has, that's a great question, and we will run it up the chain, and we will get uh, an answer for you. Um, as quickly as we can. Thank you, Eric. Appreciate it. And that. I also have, um, I just got a written answer to from Barb Porter Spaulding. Thank you, Barb. And she said, you know, she agrees that, you know, yes, it should be available, but, you know, they should really work with one of the federal or the state FADs um, and that they could use the materials for themselves locally on their own basis or modify them for international partners. So that's something that we, I think we really need to discuss. But thank you for that question. That's a great question. Do you have any other questions out there? Looks like we do have two other callers that are in our live queue at this time, so I'll move us on to our next caller in the queue. Yeah, hi, this is Todd Johnson in New York. Um, I, you had mentioned the involvement of the NALM labs as part of the drill, and I'm sorry if I missed it in the explanation, but are we actually looking at shipping the samples that are collected to a NOLM lab, and then they are going to be evaluating the packaging and shipment of the samples at the NOLM lab, and is the drill coordinator um, doing the coordination with the NOLM lab? That's a terrific question, and it's got a couple parts. Um, basically, we've had it done several ways um, where the farm is located, uh, the host producer or where the fat is situated, in some cases they would just drive and deliver the samples to the NOM laboratory during business hours. They'd be received and the evaluation would proceed. In other cases, uh, they're shipped, and again, that adds an extra piece of the, the shipping documentation, et cetera. So it can be either way. As far as coordination with the NOM laboratory, um, that's an initial piece that the drill coordinator does. We need to make sure that they're willing to do it. So far, we've had 100% participation. 
If they're not willing to evaluate the sampling, uh, we do have alternate mechanisms for that evaluation. Um, but so far, we've been really, the knowledge has been really great in doing that. Once we do that, um, and again, it's a little different between states, but on farm, if the NOM is participating in the drill, we will have coordinated with them so they know on the day of the drill, it is likely that they may be getting contacted by a FAG. And of course, um, one of the things that we do work when working with the foreign animal disease diagnosticians is to make sure that any communication outside of where they are starts with this is a drill. We don't want anybody mistaking this. Um, and again, the drill coordinator is going to contact not only the, the people doing the lab uh, evaluation, the non-labs, to let them know, first, verify that they're willing to play, and two, um, you're going to be getting, possibly be getting calls, et cetera. Um, while FADL um, has indicated they want to play, they're pretty busy, and in a lot of cases, we'll simulate them. But again, I'll work that out, or the drill coordinator will work that out with the FADD. Um, and uh, other notifications on an investigation, um, an FADD may call back to a FAD coordinator, state veterinarian, SAHO, an assistant director or district director. We will verify with those people that they are willing to play, and we will let the FADD know that in advance. Um, and we'll let everybody know when the drill is going to take place. So again, there are no surprises. So, the drill coordinator tries to tie up all those loose ends. In the application, uh, one of the things we ask for is folks that you might notify during a, an investigation. But even if that's not filled out, that's a key piece that we will verify on that initial contact with the foreign animal disease diagnostician. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. And I am showing one other caller that's in our live queue at this time, so I can move us to the next caller in the queue. Hi, this is Sherry Collins in Michigan. Hi, Liz. Um, I have hey, two how questions. are you? I'm great. Um, I have two questions. And the first is, um, we, our FADDs in this state have been doing quarterly trainings. And as I've been watching this presentation, I thought about um, having um, one of the FADDs do a virtual drill sort of during our training session and then have the others of us watch and either learn or comment on that. And I wonder, um, Eric, if you think that's a reasonable approach or if you still would encourage just the single participant? Um, I think any things we're trying once that, that may not be really exciting, um, just going through the diagnostic cards and the challenge cards may be something that you could do, but you could do that through the auspices of a, a virtual drill, and we'd be happy to, to try that out. Um, as far as a variant of that, in Wisconsin, they do a similar thing. Um, I believe they have quarterly FADD meetings. Um, with the federal and state folks, and what they do there, and they, they've only done one pilot, but their intent is on that overall all evaluation piece, um, anybody that does the drill, they're just going to basically present and look at the EMERS data and stuff like that as part of one of their meetings um, to do exactly what you're saying, but through the, the on-farm uh, side of the drill. So there are different ways that you can use it for train, or continuing education for a larger group. Uh, through the evaluation piece or probably through the drill. Great. Uh, my second question is, do you have producers lined up in all states now? That's an excellent question. What the industry is doing, and I just, my hat's off to Dr. Webb, Dr. Jonker, Dr. Simmons, uh, Chelsea at LMA, well, we're not sure we're going there yet, but with the producer organizations that uh, are helping and then the work group, um, they're on standby, um, so they don't go through a lot of work identifying operations. What we've agreed, and so far it's worked, is when we get an application, we notify them. It may take them a week or two to find the operation that's willing to do it, um, but they go out and they find the host producer. They let us know, and then we start the coordination piece going. So uh, we really couldn't do this without the industry. 
because it would just be time and cost prohibitive to try and track down producers in areas we may or may know, not know that well. So uh, again, the, the industry as a stakeholder group um, is, is essential in this, and hopefully they'll get as much out of participating as the FADD, uh, FADDs will. Thank you. And at this time, I am not showing any further callers in our live question queue. Just a reminder, though, for any guests, if you do want to ask some final questions, you can still do so by either submitting them to us using the note chat function or by raising your hand in our software by dialing pound 2 on your phone keypad. It actually looks like we did have another caller joining back into our queue, so I'll move back to the next caller. Yeah, hi, this is Todd Johnson again. Um, I had a question about the EMRS component, and um, I was wondering where a lot of our state uh, field FADDs um, have access issues with EMRS. Um, are there ways of dealing with that component of the drill when, when some of our, particularly our state kill folks, um, either don't have current access to EMRS, uh, a critical component is that for the drill? Um, it's, it's a major portion of it. But again, um, this drill is out there, or these drills are out there for continuing education. Um, we've, addre we've addressed your issue in two ways. In some states, they have folks other than the FADDs enter the EMERS data. In that case, they would just follow their procedures, and they would enter it, and again, they'd get feedback on that EMERS data entry. We've had other states where they're in the same boat. Um, we've managed to work and get the FADDs access, and uh, Dr. Archer has been terrific in this. Um, he will identify a network associated on the evaluation side, but then he'll also identify someone that will coach an FADD that's, that's new to it uh, through the process just so that they can get a little experience in it. Um, I think that helps to, to know the system. And uh, just put another kudo in for Dr. Archer, his guide is really easy to use uh, once you have access um, in going through uh, the whole data entry and the hanging process. Okay, thanks. And I do have a written question. Um, one of the questions is how do we get the recording and the presentation to use for all the fads in the state? Um, once we get the um, link from AT&T, an email will be sent out to everyone and it will give you the instructions on how to go ahead and get the recording. Um, the other question I have is, are there any plans for equine exercises, virtual or on site? At this point, we don't have any in the queue for equine exercises, but there's always possibilities in the future. Okay, we're almost at the top of the hour. Do we have any other questions? And it looks like I'm not okay. showing any final callers in our live question queue, and I believe we have addressed all the note questions that have come through at this time. Okay. Well, if we don't have any other questions, I just want to thank everybody for joining us today um, and let you know that we have an, an, another webinar coming up on uh, that I, formerly known as the BMO Observer, and that will be on May 23rd at 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and information will be sent out um, regarding that webinar, and I'd like to wish everybody to have a great day. And with that, we would like to thank again all of our guests for joining us today on our conference. That does conclude our call at this time, and you may now disconnect. Thank you.